good morning and welcome to uh, our pageant appreciation appreciation Sunday. It's time to celebrate. Please stand for our opening selection. Selection. Okay, hold on. Can I see if the choir gonna do another selection? Cause you know they messed us up. We had our skit together, right? Yeah. Are we gonna do another opening selection, or are we gonna just keep going? Keep going. They say keep going. So I'm gonna do this part. Now. Now. Now we will have. Um, I need you to use your cheerleader voice. Your cheerleader. Take out all day to preach. Now, now we will have you will have scripture, scripture book by Cameron Thomas, by Cameron Thomas, and prayer, prayer by Homie Smith. All right. See you next Good morning. I will be reading Psalms 138. I will be reading Psalms 138. I'll be reading Psalms 138. Okay. I I will praise you with my whole heart before the gods. I will sing in pra praises to you. I will worship towards your holy temple and and praise your name for your loving kindness and your true oath for or you have magnified your word above all your your name in the day when i cried out to you and you answered me and made me bold with strength in my soul and and all kings of the earth shall praise you o lord and when and they hear the word of your mouth yeah, yes, they shall sing of the ways uh, of the Lord. For great is the glory of the Lord. Th though, oh, I walk, uh, though the Lord is, is on high, he, yet he regards the lowly, but he, but the proud he knows from afar, afar. Though I walk through the mist of trouble, you will revive me. You will stretch out your hand against the wrath of my enemies, and your right hand will save me. The Lord, Lord will perfect that, perfect that which concerns me. You, your mercy, Lord, endurance, endurance me forever. Do not forsake the word of your hands. Good morning. Let us pray. Thank you, Jesus, for waking us up this morning and for all of our blessings. Please be with our sick and shut in. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen.
stands up for Jesus. Stands up for Jesus. Thank you, Kim and Adam. <laughs> we will now have announcements. Announcements by the church work. Oops, collect. Followed by a musical selection. Musical selection by a After the selection, selection, will all children, all children, will gather, gather in the back for a howdy good time in children church. My girl. <laughs> Let us not forget our sick and shut-in that's listed in our bulletin. I have just a few announcements for the morning. November 3rd, these are our calendar events. November 3rd is Feed More Sunday by Reverend Vance Jones. November 7th is Feed More. November 10th is our Veterans Day program where Brian and Felicia Wyatt are their co-chairs. November the 17th is Cancer Awareness Sunday. There will be an ushers meeting on November the 10th, immediately following worship service. And again, please email all church announcements to the email address listed in the bulletin by Thursday. Charles City's Veterans Day brunch, America without her soldiers would be like God without his angels. Monday, November 11, 2024 at 10 a.m. Please RSVP by October the 28th. Contact Miranda at 804-652-4702. Thank you for your service. We do have one card to missionaries and women's ministry. People like you add little touches of color and warmth to life. Just thinking about your kindness brings a smile. Thank you so much, Lisa Jones. Those are all of our announcements for the week. I hope everyone has a great week. Thank you. Good morning, St. John. If you have your Bibles with you, please, if you would, turn to Philippians 4.13. If you have it on your phone, we'll give you time to look for it. Do we all have it? Give you a minute more. How's everybody today? Fine. Wonderful. Isn't God good? As the pastor says, he's good what? And all the time, God is good. Okay. <clears throat> In the Good News Bible, it says, I have the strength to face all conditions by the power that Christ gives me. In the King James it says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. Wow, little children getting up here doing what they did this morning. It takes power, it takes strength, it takes courage. Yes, it does. And let's give them a hand, please. That's the spirit of God, that's the spirit of Christ on these children. And the parents and adults who nurture them are doing a marvelous job. It's called practice, it's called preparation because they're our future. They're the future of this community, the future of this church. And so this is what we do. We reinforce what's been taught at home. We do it here in the church and we reinforce it again in where? The schoolhouse. And then wherever we see them in the public, in the community, we let them know that, hey, you know, I'm an adult, you're a child, and I'm here to help you in any way I can, but I'm also here to guide you so that you know the way to walk. And that's what the Bible says we do, train them up in the way they ought to go. Amen. Okay, and that's at all times. It doesn't just mean when we're in these four walls, within these four walls. Okay, it's the fourth quarter. The score is 23 to 30. 
third down. One minute and 45 seconds left on the clock. The team with the ball has moved down the field. They've moved 50, uh, 65 yards. He makes the touchdown. The score is now what? 29 to 30. What's the call? What's the coach going to call? What do you think he's going to call? Is he going to call? <laughs> call for prayer? <laughs> yes, you're absolutely right. He's probably praying. <laughs> so it's 29 to 30. And the coach has a couple of options. He can say, oh, go ahead and kick the, for the extra point and tie the game up, and then we're going to overtime. Or we can go for the two-point conversion. The opposing team does what at this time? Who knows? Why? Why is he calling a timeout? He wants to break that momentum. He wants them to not keep the energy, the feeling that they have about being at the threshold of winning this game. They want to break that thought. They want to break that feeling. He wants to break that, that attitude so that they will perhaps miss the point, the conversion. So the coach doesn't call for the two-point conversion. They snap the ball, it's kicked, but it's blocked. And it's returned to the other end of the field. Would you call it a missed opportunity? by not calling for the two-point conversion when you had an opportunity to go for the two-point conversion? So on November the 5th, we have an opportunity. We have the momentum. We are at the goal line. We don't have a choice. In other words, we don't have the option of calling for this one point to tie the game. In this game, there is no tie. Do you understand where I'm going here? Does everybody understand what I'm talking about? Okay. So let's win this game. If you haven't voted, you know what you need to do. Next Saturday is the last day for early voting in this county. You know what you need to do. Don't wait until November 5th. You have an opportunity, and you know it's a blessing to be in a state that has four, had 45 days of early voting. We have a great turnout so far. We have over 1,200 people in the county that have gone to the registrar's office to vote. And we have people turning in their ballots also. So we have had in-person early voting and people dropping off their ballots at the registrar's office. They are not wasting the opportunity. So let us not do the same. If you know of someone in your family, there are friends, coworkers or whatnot, have not voted, please encourage them. You're setting the example because we saw what these kids can do up here by teaching them the right things to do and how to do things. Well, voting is something that we teach them also about. And do you know our first place to vote, our first opportunity to vote was in church, and it happened before we had the legal right to vote outside in the community? We couldn't even vote for the people that represented us at one time. But we could vote for people to represent us in church. So we were taught those values and, and um, those attitudes and perspectives about um, governance, self-governance, and so forth and so on, and sovereignty, and subordinated sovereignty. For those of you who don't understand what I'm saying is, is that you have the federal government, you have the state government, you have local governments. Each one has, uh, below the federal government, is a subordinate government. And it's at those levels where all of the decisions are made that affect your daily lives. So we want to teach our children to vote and exercise their right to do so, okay? So thank you so much for your time. We have our next meeting, uh, oh, so correction. All of the NAACP members who are here today, uh, would you please stay behind after church service for a few minutes and see me in the North X? I need to talk to you for a few minutes. 
and then we'll be done. Thank you very much, and God bless you. Let the church say amen. 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 We certainly thank God that you are here with us on today. We certainly welcome you to our our church service on today. We uh, are very happy and excited that you are here. We don't take your presence for granted. And we are uh, certainly thankful to God for all those uh, young people that came and stood up here to do uh, to do worship. Amen. Uh, I, I I was uh, talking to uh, Miss Leilani. I said it's a little different up here. And she said, "Yeah, it sure is." And, um, but we thank God for them and for their courage and keep continuing on. Uh, sometimes when you are in the congregation and everything is you you're doing your thing and so on and so forth but when you get up behind this desk and you look out on all the faces that are here um it becomes real <laughs> and so it's um it's something that i struggled with when i was young still do at times um and i but i thank god that god has allowed us to get to the point that we are at now 
Um, we had a great time on last week. We had uh, my, my anniversary, me and Pam's anniversary here, 22 years, and we certainly thank God for that. When um, the, uh, the, the, the person that came to preach, Dr. Quarles, and his wife came uh, to uh, preach, and they had, they had a marvelous time. And so we sent them home with bread and a um, couple, um, couple of chicken roast and <laughs> you know, some more food that had, was left. And I mean, you're talking about grinning all the way out the door. <laughs> so we, we're certainly thankful to them. Uh, and I, I hear that they'll be coming back on next year. They're certainly such a lovely couple, and we thank God for them. We, we had such a great time here um, in the back, uh, just, uh, just fellowshipping with one another again. I thought that was just awesome, just to be able to sit down and fellowship with one another. We had all those great cooks back there. We had, um, we had sausage, uh, bacon, eggs. We had potatoes. Did we have potatoes? We had potatoes. Um, we didn't have any salt herring, though. We didn't have no salt herring. <laughs> but all those that were in the kitchen, will you please stand? All those that was this working and uh, in the kitchen, will you please stand? Working and serving in the kitchen, will you please stand? Uh huh. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I, I left here on that next morning, yeah, Sunday, Sunday night, but the next morning, uh, me and um, Monroe and Judy, Pam, um, and Reverend, uh, Reverend and Reverend White, we went to Kentucky. I had it wrong. I was uh, thinking I was going to Tennessee, but um, <laughs> told me to keep driving. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so we went to Kentucky to see the um, Noah's Ark. Yeah, it was the recreation of Noah's Ark. And let me tell you something, that thing was um, almost two football fields long. And to know that Noah was working on that thing, you know, and his family was working on that thing for at least 75 years um, to, to get it to perfection. And uh, one of the things they did mention was the fact that um, Noah might have hired some other people to work for him uh, during this period. But don't you know that people that worked for him, they didn't believe in what Noah was doing. They were just getting paid, okay? And uh, so it's, it's, it's something because when the waters of the deep came up and it started raining down, Folk that had worked on the ark couldn't get into the ark. Can you believe it? That, that's something, ain't it? And so, you know, my brothers and sisters, it's great to come to church. It's great to have great fellowship. But please, ma'am, please, sir, believe in Jesus Christ. Because the Bible says that just as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be when, this, when the Son of Man comes. So please, ma'am, please, sir, believe on Jesus Christ, because it's real. It's real. And one of these days, time is going to wind up. <laughs> and when that trumpet sounds, I want you and me to be ready. Just like our forefathers, foremothers used to sing, want to be ready to walk in Jerusalem, <laughs> just like John. <laughs> Amen? Amen. This is a special day for me as well um, because we, uh, today we give thanks and honor to clergy. Now, last week was my week, and I wouldn't, um, I, I don't want to have two weeks of being on it, uh, but really, <laughs> uh, but I just wanted to make sure that we put all of our attention on Reverend Vance Jones. Amen. Amen. 
you know, he's a great guy. You know, he went to Virginia State, the greatest school on earth. <laughs> and he went there and everything, played football there, and he's done a great job here uh, in the county. One of the things that um, I like about a, a lot of people that are here, they were part of the county, they left the county, but then they left the county for educational purposes or work purposes, but they always come back to the county, the place that they, they love, the place that gave them their start, to contribute, and so we thank God for him continuously coming back to St. John Baptist Church, not that far away, just a hop, skip, and a jump. Uh, as they say, cut across the field and you, you'll find him. <laughs> but we thank God for his ministry here. Uh, certainly he, um, he goes and visits uh, the sick. He helps us in ministry here, and for to this pastor, he has uh, been a joy. Um, I can call on him, and he'll come in and uh, preach, especially sometimes when I was sick or sometimes when I have doubts about coming in because I don't want to spread nothing. I'm going to give nothing to nobody. <laughs> and sometimes um, that, that has happened. So we, we thank God for him for always being ready, just like a, uh, like, some of the guys down in Texas, I remember this story, and I'm not going to hold you long with this, but I think it was Texas A&M, and they only had, at this point, they only had about a few people um, on the football team, and they, they didn't have any backup on the bench, so those guys had to play both sides. They had to play uh, defense and offense. One of the guys got hurt, and they couldn't play unless they had enough people to play. So they looked out in the audience, and one guy was standing up, and they got him to come down. He was a member of the school, and sure enough, that guy caught the winning touchdown pass. <laughs> and from that time all the way to this time, when you go to a game, I think it was Texas A&M, all of the people are standing ready. <laughs> you never know who's going to be called, but they are always standing ready. And this is Reverend Jones. He's always Standing ready. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's, give the God, let's give the Lord some praise this morning. I, I want to thank the church family for a blessing. I want to thank everyone for the cards and the, the calls that, that have been made. It's an opportunity to serve. And like Pastor Tate said, coming back to the community where I grew up, I can remember coming here when we were at Cajun Bible School, we had under the old cedar trees out here, the oak trees. Sunday school, we had to hitch a ride with some of the deacons who used to pick us up every on Sunday mornings. But now here we are now, we're in a place now where everybody in the congregation has a car. So it's an opportunity for all of us to serve. I just thank God that he pricked my heart and told me to stay at St. John because I had the opportunity to go to a couple of churches. And I wrestled with that. And the Holy Spirit just let me know, stay with your family. Stay with your family. So we need each other. We need each other. We need each other. We're... We are in a place where when this is a church family, I should be able to feel some of your pain. I should be able to feel some of your anguish and be able to feel some of the things that are, that are tugging at your spirit and come with a positive word to allow you to feel that much better. I just think that I want to submit to those here, come to Sunday school class on Sunday morning. We have a good time in Sunday school at 9 o'clock, 9 a.m., 
It's an opportunity for all of us, all of us and it's open dialogue. We talk about different things, but we stick, try to stay with, with, with the text. But we have an opportunity to serve in this community. And I just thank God for just allowing me to have enough, a reasonable portion of health and strength in my body that I'm able to serve. And like the song says, I'm going to serve the Lord until I die. And we, should, we all should be, be servants. Let's, get, let's give the Lord some praise right now. Yeah. And before I sit down, Pastor Tate, your 22 years was a lot of, was a lot of service. A lot of service. A lot of miles. A lot of, a lot of nights staying up late to prepare a sermon. Preparing a sermon is not easy. But if you allow the Holy Spirit to give you a message, it makes it that much easier. But you still have to stand and preach the word. And I just thank God for Pastor Tate doing what he's done for the last 22 years. I received my call to ministry unto him. And I don't know why. I mean, God, God, I said, God you, you show me. I'm calling you to ministry. And I pull, I pull away. God said, no, you. And I realized, church, there are a lot of things that you think that you got to shed to walk with God. Bring what you have and walk with God. If you have some baggage, people take that baggage away from you and give you something new. And that's what he did for me because I had some things that I, I said I didn't feel worthy of to be a minister. I mean, you know, look back at your track record. But God said, no, don't worry about your past. I have a future for you, and I think, and I know the plan. Let's give him some praise right now. Yeah. yeah. Church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen again. Amen. amen. Certainly. I'm trying to get this thing straight so I can see it. Ah, there we go. Thank you. 
<laughs> All right. Okay. Fourteenth chapter, beginning at the first verse. Now the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread were only two days away, and the chief priests and the teachers of the law were looking for some sly way to address to arrest Jesus and kill him. But not during the feast, they said, or the people may riot. While he was in Bethany, reclining at a table in the home of a man known as Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume made of pure nard. She broke the jar and poured the perfume on his head. Some of those presents were saying indignant, indignantly to one another, why this waste of perfume? It could have been sold for more than a year's wages and the money given to the poor. And they rebuked her harshly. Leave her alone, said Jesus. Why are you bothering her? She has done a beautiful thing to me. The poor you will always have with you and you can help them anytime you want, but you will not always have me. She did what she could. She poured perfume on my body beforehand to prepare for my burial. I tell you the truth, wherever the gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. Amen. It doesn't take all of that. It doesn't take all of that. Certainly, when we look at the scripture, and we see that Bethany, Jesus was at Bethany at Simon the leper's house. And we hear that there is a woman that comes with an alabaster jar full of very expensive perfume. And we journey with her as she comes into a household full of men. The only ladies there are the ones that are serving. If even ladies were allowed to serve during that time at that, at that particular moment. And she comes and she breaks that jaw open. And after she breaks that jaw open, it fills the room. And we see this passage not only in this Bible, the Gospel of Mark, but we see it also in the Gospel of Luke, the Gospel of Matthew, and the Gospel of John. So we know that it is something that was significant in the lifetime of Jesus during that last week. She breaks this jaw open, possibly the top of it, and she takes it and she puts it, puts all of the perfume on Jesus' head. John, who was there, says not only did she put it on the head, but she put this perfume on Jesus' feet as well and wiped the excess off with her hair. And when this happened and the perfume filled the room, the disciples were a little upset 
I'm sure they said in their own mind, it doesn't take all of that to serve the Lord, to worship the Lord. I was um, friends with a young lady, well, she's my age, same age that, we, that I am now, and she was talking about getting married, and she was saying she'd already been married one time, and she was divorced, and she said she would never get married again, and, and I told her that she would, and certainly she laid it on me. She said, if I ever get married, you'll marry me. I said, okay. So about four years later, she showed up and she said, uh, we, we, I'm thinking about getting married. I met a man. I'm thinking about getting married. And she said, I know what I told you, but I want you to know that he's a Quaker. And he has certain traditions that he has to go through in order to get married. And so I'm going to let him I'm going to go and, and marry through um, the Quaker tradition. So I couldn't wait. I said, Pam, we got to go to see this. <laughs> I, I, I didn't, I'd never been in a Quaker uh, uh, meeting before. And so we, I went there with all this anticipation. I didn't know what to expect. Uh, and when we got there, everybody came into the meeting. There was no music, no, no piano, no here comes the bride, none of that. Everybody was pretty much in street clothes. And we sat there. And from time to time, somebody would get up and say what? The Lord had spoke to them, and they would sit down. But basically, the service was in silence. And, and I was excited to go to the, see the Quakers' service because I know that they were ones that were part of the Underground Railroad. And I was, I had often wondered, okay, why isn't there more African Americans than Quakers? Now, no. <laughs> no music. No, even, I, we didn't even read scripture. People got up. One person would get up and sit down. Ten minutes later, somebody else would get up and say something and sit down. And that was it. The preacher announced that they were man and, male, man and wife. They had a big marriage certificate that all of us would sign to say that we are helping them in their marriage. And that was it. So if a Quaker would come to our service or a wedding where there is that there's all of this decoration, everybody is in their Sunday best, and the the, the, the bridesmaids come out dressed all alike. The grooms come out, groomsmen, groomsmen come out. Everybody's standing on each side, some 10, 11 bridesmaids and grooms. Then the, 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 the roll, the white rollers roll down the aisle, and everybody stands, and the music sways to here comes the bride. People as young as, as three and four are taking flowers and throwing them on the floor for the bride to come down. 
so that the bride's feet won't touch the ground, I'm sure that they would look at us and say, it doesn't take all of that. There are so many different worship styles from the, 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 the majestic styles of the Catholics and all the way down to where there are services that have maybe three entries on them. You open, you close, you got scripture, and they say on the program that we will go as the Lord sees fit. And I've been to services where I saw a small program and I knew, I said, okay, well, we'll be in and out of here in at least about a couple of hours. Four hours later, I have got up to preach. <laughs> Different ways of worshiping. But the bottom line is not the different ways that we worship, but the underlying principle of why we worship. We worship God in whatever context that we can because God has been so good. So whether I come and sit down and I watch people get up or I might pre be prompted to say something, or whether we have the, the, the piano and the organ just start playing and, and make a tone, and next thing you know, there are people jumping up and they're shouting. Don't, don't expect me to shout today, okay? Shouting, remember shouting, not with your voice, but shouting with your feet. Dancing, and the organ and the piano and the, and the drums, they just get right in it. They just catch it up and, and, and keep it moving. Whether we do that or whether we sit like bumps on a log, it's the context. It's the context of why we worship. Where it doesn't take all of that for some people, for some of us, it takes all of that. Mary shows us, and I, I'm not going to take a whole lot of your time today, because, but I, I want, want you to see what Mary does. Mary instructs us as to how we are to worship. She lets us know what the proper way of worship is. Jesus says it best. He says, she's done a beautiful thing for me. <laughs> Would you like Jesus to say that about you? She has done what she could. She has anointed my body for burial. In two words, I would say, Mary believed. Mary believed Jesus. Jesus had, 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 had called and told his disciples on three occasions in Mark. And if you know, if he, if he did it in three occasions, he probably did it more times. He told them that he was going to Jerusalem. He was going to be rejected by the authorities. That he was going to be spat on. That he was going to be beaten and crucified by those same authorities he would die and then be buried, and three days later, he would raise up again. They heard Jesus, but they didn't listen to Jesus, because if they would have listened to Jesus, they would have believed like Mary believed. 
What do you mean, preacher? He said it. And every time he said it, they said something different to let me know and anybody else know that they weren't listening. He said, I'm going to Jerusalem. I'm going to be spat on. I'm going to get ready to be beaten, whipped, killed. On the third day, I will rise again. And what did they say? On one occasion, they said they were fighting over who was the best disciple. On another occasion, they were fighting to find out who's going to sit on his left side or who's going to sit on his right side when he came into the kingdom. On the next this uh, uh, one time they, they were fighting to see who would be first and Jesus said the first will be last and the last will be first they heard him they heard a voice they heard him but they didn't listen Mary on the other hand was chastised by her sister Martha and she was rewarded by Jesus Remember that time when all the disciples were in Mary and Martha's house? And Mary and Martha, they were, that Martha was serving, and she was so busy serving. And Mary was sitting there under Jesus' feet, listening to each and every word that he was saying. And it got so bad that Martha said, Jesus, tell Mary to come help me serve you. And Jesus said, Martha, Martha, you are so busy on so many things but Mary has chosen the right thing she sat there she listened to every word that Jesus said why because heaven and earth will pass away but his word will Stand forever. You can hear, hear is a, hearing is a process and it's effortless. It's, it's, it's something that, that, that happens. You can hear a shot. You can hear over here the birds. It's, it doesn't take any effort to hear, but listening is intentional, and it requires one to have uh, the, uh, the motivation to understand what you are hearing. Jesus said many times, those who have ears, let them hear. Here. But it comes by hearing, and hearing comes by the word of God. So if you're listening and hearing and intentionally listening, when you hear the word of God, when you read the word of God, when you listen to the word of God, it builds your faith up to know that this is the word of God. She listened to him, and she believed. And so she was, after all those male disciples, big burly men, didn't hear, she realized that if he was going to die, he needed to be anointed. She believed Jesus. Not only did she believe Jesus, but she believed Jesus at great cost. How does one properly worship God? Jesus says it best. She has done a beautiful thing for me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body to be buried. She listened. She heard Jesus. But she followed Jesus at great cost. The nod that Mary used was an uncommon perfume extracted from the grasses that grew in the country of India. 
Once the juices were squeezed out of the grass, they were dried into a hard, lard-like substance. And turning that lard-like substance into perfume was a very lengthy and costly process. Then you had to add the cost of transporting that lard or that perfume from India to other parts of the world, and you can see why it costs so much. Usually, only the very wealthy could afford it. Usually, it was used for anointing of kings or queens or nobility. We, we understand this and we see this because the perfume that we can go down to the five and dime, excuse me, not five, no five and dime, the dollar store. This is up now, it's not five and dime. Or J.C. Penn, any of those stores, we can go and we can get what they call perfume, but what they call perfume is just a tiny bit of perfume mixed with alcohol and various other other uh, 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 things to help make it smell right. But perfume itself is very costly. One ounce of Old to Joy cost $500. And that was back in the, that was back in the 90s. And so you can see if she had a quart of this, 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 this uh, perfume that it was extremely costly. Take what you make every month and add it up by 12. Not add it, multiply it by 12. And you'll see how much it cost her to give to God. We walking around looking for a blessing. Mary had her blessing in the fact that her brother died. He was dead for three days, four days. And, and, and Mary again at Jesus' feet Master, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Do you believe yeah, that he would get up? Yes, I know he'll rise up at the end of the days. No. Uh, during the resurrection, Jesus said, no, I am the resurrection. I am the life. They that believe in me shall never die. Jesus raised her brother up from the dead. And she's searching, trying to figure out what can I do to give something back to Jesus? What can I do just to let him know? I, I know only God could raise the dead. Only God could open the eyes of the blind. Only God could do all the things that he has done. What can I do? to serve him. What can I do? And she gets in her mind to get that perfume. On January the 20th, 1961, a clerk of the U.S. Supreme Court held a large Bible as John F. Kennedy took the oath of office for the be the 35th president of the United States of America. In that speech, one of his most memorable remarks were, ask not what your country can do for you, but ask what you can do for your country. Mary would say, ask not what God or Jesus can do for you, but ask what you can do for Jesus. Everybody running around. I'm, I, 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 I'm looking for a blessing. 
blessing. I want this blessing. I want that blessing. When are we going to get it in our mind to bless God? He's already done enough for you to want to bless him. I heard one preacher say, well, the alarm clock went off and woke up a whole lot of people, a lot of people say. But there's an alarm clock that went off and there's a whole lot of people who didn't wake up. If you woke up this morning, <laughs> that's enough to give him some praise. If you got the activity of your limbs, it's enough to give him some praise. And if you can look and see, that is enough to give him some praise. If you can take care of yourself, that is enough to give him some praise. He's already blessed you. He's already blessed me. Now it's time for us to see what we can do for him. Last thing, and I'll, 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 tell you, I'll, I'll, I'll be finished, I'll be finished. I, I'll, I'll tell you I'll be finished, I'll tell you. I'll tell you, but I had, I had to just, she had humility. Humility. She went into a room full of men, and that was bold back then. I don't know if you remember it, but in North Carolina, sometimes when men started talking, they would make sure that the women couldn't come into the room. That's when I was growing up. She did a beautiful thing by coming in to the room by opening up the nod, by opening up that perfume and pouring it on his head and pouring it on his feet and wiping the excess with her hair. She didn't care who was looking. She didn't care who was watching. But God had done so much for her, she wasn't about to hold back her praise. Is there anybody in here that God has done something for you in such a way that you're not looking to your left or looking to your right to see who's watching you give God the praise? Is there anybody in here that 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 will give God the praise no matter how many people are looking, no matter what folk are saying, no matter what people are talking about you. Is there anybody in here that loves God enough and knows what God has done for them in their life? God praise no matter where they are no matter what they are doing Mary said even though the disciples might think it doesn't take all of that Mary said yes it does amen amen, amen. amen. Let the church say amen. We open the doors of the church. Any man, woman, boy, girl who is here that doesn't know Jesus Christ, 
as their Lord and Savior, we ask that they will come at this time. Is there anyone here that doesn't know the Lord? God for you coming out and being a part of our worship service today. Certainly, we are uh, thankful, so, we're so thankful to have our guests with us on today, and also, amen, also we are um, thankful to have Mrs. Charity with us, coming back with us, and we had Mrs. Jones for two weeks, and she was um, getting over a, a surgery, we thank God for her, amen. And we certainly thank God for each and every one of you that's um, on Facebook land or YouTube land. Amen? <laughs> Amen. Also, if you haven't as yet given, you can give um, on your way out or you can give through Tively. And we thank God for, for those two um, ways that we can give. If you have not yet registered to vote, um, if you haven't voted yet, please go and vote. Amen? Don't wait till the polls, don't wait till, uh, what is it, November the 4th or 5th or whatever it is. I don't, I don't even know what it is, uh, Brother Charity, because I've already voted. I already put my, put my mark in and everything, so I thank God for that. Uh, also, we are... Um, Thankful for the youth that came and those that were out here on yesterday. Amen. I'm sure y'all had a great time on yesterday. Now let's go to God in a moment of prayer. Heavenly and Holy Father, we thank you so much for your son, Jesus Christ. We ask your blessings on this, your church service. We ask that you will continue to stand by. Reverend Vance Jones, and continue to lift him up, Heavenly Father, on every leaning side. We ask, Lord, that you would be with each and every church member, those that are here under the sound of my voice, as well as those that are listening in on the broadcast. Lord, bless them, keep them, and we give your name the glory, the praise, and the honor. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. And now may God the Father, God the Son, and God the Blessed Holy Spirit rest you and abide in our hearts and give us peace, love, and joy this day, henceforth, and forevermore. Let us all say, 